Howdy folks, Steve KM9G here. Today we're going to be making FT8 magic on the True SDX. But first, we got to make a cable. Let's get over to the bench and make some cables. Today's menu, an orange box for an orange radio. This is the True SDX. I'm still on a quest for the perfect storage container for QRP radios. So what do I have here? I have a whole bunch of accessories here that we need to deal with in order to get this thing working on FT8. What you need for your audio connection to connect your audio to your computer, this connection up here, this top one, is just a regular run-of-the-mill audio cable. These are the super stretchy expandable ones, so they take up less space. They expand to about five foot, and then they collapse down. I only need one, so we're getting rid of that one. This is a Sound Blaster Creative THX True Studio Pro. It's an SB1290. Plugs into USB on one end and gives you microphone and audio out on the other end. There's also the Sobrent. USB sound card, so I will link to that down below. I have a MacBook Pro, and the MacBook Pro only has the one audio connection. This would enable me to plug into the MacBook Pro and have the two wires that we're gonna make up today work. This is my power connection. This is my speaker because the speaker built in sucks. But uh, Manuel admits that the speaker sucks. It's just kind of there for like emergency backup use. So this is lead sound plug-in USB rechargeable powered speaker. And it just plugs right into the audio port and you're good to go. There will be a link for all of that fantastic stuff down in the description. But what we need to do is we need to make up the microphone cable. So I have these supplies here because this gets wired up weird. If you have ever grabbed a regular off-the-shelf audio cable and tried to do any kind of work with it, the wires that it comes with are so so ridiculously small, they're impossible to strip, they're impossible to solder, they're impossible, they're impossible, they're impossible. We need to make our own. So I have this one here that has a pre-factory made end on one side and loose wires of a decent usable gauge on the other side. Probably still thinner than I'd like, but this is what you get. This is where the, this is where the money comes in. This is where life gets easy. These are your... Uh, audio connectors. They come in a variety of colors. You really just need one. Which one am I going to do? I'm going to do, I'm going to do this blue one. This is the sexiest one. It's got a little bit of what looks like metal flake in the, in the paint job. Okay, so the magic of this is that it looks professional when you're all done. So you take your wires and you shove them through here. And then when you're done, you screw the thing on and it looks fantastic. It looks like, it looks like you knew what you were doing. You make a nice audio cable. In the instruction manual for the radio, the part that goes into here, because this is your microphone and your Morse code key, this tip needs to not be connected because the tip of the connector is the CW key. And that will immediately put this thing into transmit mode because you'll see a connection between those. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is we want to connect the left and right audio from the computer to this ring and then the ground to this sleeve. So you have, for terminology sake, you have tip, ring, sleep. This is currently my go-to multimeter. When I took this to the Youth on the Air camp, all the kids were like, oh wow, that's so cool looking, because it's got a color LCD screen, which is actually, you know, I like it too. It's pretty cool. So now we need to figure out which part this tip is connected to. So I'm going to use the little notch in my probe. I'm going to try and find it over here. Okay, so the tip is connected to this little part right here, this part on the end, which is insulated from this part. So that must be one of the other parts that we need. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try and find the ring. Okay, and so that leaves this one here as the sleeve. Stick that in the hole if I can find the hole. Yep, so that's the sleeve. So it should be, black wire should be the sleeve over here. Let's test that out. And then red is the tip, and then white is the ring. Yep. So what I need to do is I need to marry these two together onto the sleeve connection here, and then I need to put this onto the ground connection there. And that's it. So the next thing I need is my Bell System telephone shears. And these have these little ridges in here that will help me skin this cable. And if this was regular audio leads, I would have taken half of the wires with me when I did that job. And I'm actually gonna cut the ends off because it's still too long anyway. And 
now for the moment of truth. Did it work? Look at that. Beautiful. Now let's get this thing plugged in and see the fruits of our labors. All right, folks, here's where it gets interesting. This is the computer side of the setup. I've got it up and running. You can see I've got decodes in the waterfall. I'm calling CQ. Life is awesome. Let's go in and show the configuration because there's a couple of gotchas here. In the settings radio tab, I had to set mine to none and I had to make it Vox. This is a known problem with these. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Apparently the internal processor is struggling to do all the stuff that it's doing and it doesn't really have a whole lot of priority for cat. Yours may work. If yours does work, let me get you the settings that it will take in order to get it to work. You wanna pick the Kenwood TS480 from this long list. It's alphabetical, so I gotta get down to the Ks. Kenwood TS480. And then you wanna pick your USB port you want to pick, and now it's working. Fun. Then you want to pick uh, 38400 for your baud rate. You want to pick eight for data bits, one for stop bits, none for handshake. And Manuel says to make this DTR high and RTS low, and it doesn't work now. So I'm going to switch those back to none, and it doesn't work now. Either way, it's not important because you don't really need cat control unless you're going to be doing a lot of band switching remotely. You can change the VFO knob to the right frequency by hand, no problem there. And that's what I'm going to do for this. I'm going to switch this over to none again. Well, before I do that, there's your screenshot of what it should look like if your cat does work. Audio. I have that Creative Lab Sound Blaster device. You want to pick the input side of the Sound Blaster device. It's going to say Creative Technology, whatever. It's going to say Sobrent USB Sound Card. It's going to say USB Audio Codec, but it's going to say input on it. And then on the, on the output side, after you pick this, see how this says monitor? You don't want the monitor on the input side. You want input on the input side. On the output, you're gonna pick the same thing. You're gonna see that there's no monitor here this time. So you're just gonna pick output for whatever your sound card happens to be. Whether it's, again, the creative technologies that I have, if it's your built-in uh, stereo sound card that you have, or if it is your uh, sovereign sound card it'll show up here and it'll it'll clearly say that it's output and then we hit okay we can see if we're actually doing anything you see what psk reporter says all right so for the last few minutes that i've been doing the filming here uh you can see about eight minutes to the present we are getting some signals in and out and i'm seeing most of the united states at about six watts this thing's actually putting out six watts according to my new meter so Fantastic stuff. For the decibel meter on the left-hand side, you're going to want to change that using the volume control on the front of the radio. If it is too high, turn the volume down. If it's red, and there we go. And you want to ride somewhere around that red-green mark. There we go. Awesome. Sent a minus 18, received a minus one. KC6SEH, thank you for the contact. On the front panel, here's what we need to do in order to make this thing work. First thing you need to do is tune it in to the FT8 frequency. 14074 is the 20 meter FT8 frequency in this example. In the menu, set your volume somewhere where it doesn't show up red on the left hand side. This was pretty finicky for me, so you're just gonna have to play with it. There's your USB upper sideband mode setting. And then you want to go down into the threes. And you want to set this thing for Vox on. And then you see a little V there. And when I start talking, it goes to a T. Turn that back off because I don't have any antenna connected. Those are your settings for this. For your audio cables, your connections on your computer, you'll either have two like this, and you can see that this one here has a microphone on it, and this one here has a what appears to be a headphone type symbol. Or you may just have the one with the multi-cable, so you might need an adapter like this. What you'll need to do is you will be responsible for crossing over. The audio out of the radio goes into the microphone in on the computer. So it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to look at it, but this is how it goes. The 
audio out from the computer goes to the microphone in on the radio. So headphones to microphone jack. You gotta kinda jump that mental hurdle in your head, but you will see it right away with signals in the waterfall. So it's a finicky little beast, isn't it? You saw we got a contact out there. I had to ride the audio signal a little bit. I had to set it for box. You may or may not be able to get cat control working on your radio. This one I cannot get it working on. Maybe a future firmware upgrade will help. I already have put the latest firmware. I've reached out to them on the support forums. That is the nature of the game when you're trying to shove as much processing power requirement at something that doesn't have a whole lot of processing power. Either way, it's a blast to play with. I hope you enjoy your true SDX, and I will see you on the air. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome, and we'll see you in the next one.